<laughs> Rob grows the beard. I don't know if Namor Namor looks great regardless of beard or not beard, but let's just say Namor the prince. I think that'd be Atlantis. atrocious because he'd be in the water and things just be floating around and he would just look like fish would cart eating at his face and getting it, it, I guess that worked for Aquaman, quote and unquote, but you know. Did it do? <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the Heroes World Quarantine Podcast. I'm your host today, Stu Pei. I'm here, as always, with the proprietors and owners of Heroes World, the store that you all know and love in Markham slash Unionville, Ontario. Say hello to the world, John and Andre. Hey folks. What up, folks? And of course, join with us is our resident Prince of Mischief, the man who would like a beard like Namor, but will settle for the beard like Jason Momoa. <laughs> And Aquaman, Mr. Rob Cadet. Uh, hi. And for the record, I actually can't grow anything. <laughs> this this face is in, has an inability to grow any facial hair. So. We, can, we know what to buy for Christmas. A beard. Hopefully you can put it on your face. <laughs> there we go. I'm going go oh. to the, I'm go to the party store and get like one of those, just like the spirit gum and put a fake one on and just to see how it all works out one day. We, we got we to gotta do, or, you know, do one of those uh, CGI overlays instead of, instead of erasing <laughs> right. the mustache, let's add, let's yes. add it. Let's add <laughs> I, you know budget. what, you know why I wouldn't, I fear I would look like Al Borland. I think that, that from uh, home improvement, I think I, I, that's probably what I would, it would not be a good look. Hey man, he, he has a very, he had a very successful career. So we all <laughs> be cool so on the show. Keep making them checks. <laughs> Anyways, uh, welcome everyone. This is your podcast slash video, whatever you're watching on, whatever medium, uh, where we talk about pop culture, comic books, science fiction, mm -hmm. video games, etc., etc. This is the conversations that we normally have in the store. However, we can't meet, we can't film, so we're all doing it online at home. Uh, hopefully this is uh, your opportunity to, you know, listen in, uh, feel like you're in a store, feel like you're part of the conversation and uh, join us on our journey today. As always, feel free to comment below with all your thoughts on our topics today. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, John, Rob are very active on the socials and they will get back to you. Sometimes I will as well, but we will all be active there and we'll chat. So as always, we're going to start with our first topic as always episode four of wandavision what was the title of that episode john uh we interrupt this program perfect and mr rob Gadet, will you tell us do the uh non-descriptive here we go uh oh, <laughs> without positive or negative Ooh. adjectives <laughs> One sentence, no. nothing happened all right <laughs> lots of things so, happen shut up john <laughs> in this episode uh, it's actually this episode takes place well before the events uh, that we have seen in the prior three episodes. So, um, without getting into too much spoiler territory, um, the you talk about the blip because the thing happened. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say Geraldine in the show, who we now find out is uh, Monica Rambo. She wakes up uh, right after the blip, so she was one of the ones that Thanos had snapped during uh, Infinity War and came back just post Endgame. Um, and you see that uh, she she's returned. Obviously, the five years have passed. Um, she is part of the organization uh, Sword uh, that was um, created by her mom, who, if you remember, was in Captain Marvel. So that's uh, there's issues there. Um, eventually, she gets uh, integrated back into the organization and, and goes to an investigate a mysterious. Uh, situation of missing person case in Westview, uh, New Jersey. What makes the case so interesting is that there is no Westview, New Jersey. Um, and so what happens is, is you've got a lot of individuals from who are C-list uh, supporting actors <clears throat> returning from, pre from previous Marvel movies, returning uh, into this episode, setting up base and trying to figure out what is happening. And, you, and they start to fill in some of the pieces that we saw in episode one and two of the season, the radio, somebody trying to talk to Wanda, um, the helicopter that we saw. And this then leads into where episode three lay, um, episode three ended uh, with the Brady Bunch um, sequel, as we saw the you know, uh, Geraldine slash now Monica Rambeau was pushed through uh, out of the, the dome at the end of episode three. It catches you up to that point and it gives you a, a bit of a backstory of what's happening on the outside of the show that is being created. And there are some pretty serious hints as to who the, um, the villain is of the season. 
uh, although I believe it might be a misdirect, but it's giving you setting up to see what, what exactly is happening. Before we go into uh, asking John his opinion, because uh, John, who, you know, not really high on the show, but let's just make a comment quickly that, my God, they are spending money on the show. Um, let's quickly just say right now that that, that opening sequence where I was watching it. It's pretty. Cinematography, like the the set, like the the way that that show looks. I think John and I mentioned before was uh, off camera. Was like it looks like a movie. Like that that mm. like blip technology that they came back yeah. when I first watched. I was like, is this the <clears throat> Avenger movie? Like it looked damn pretty yeah. and everything. Even just even just walking around the halls and stuff, it, you can tell it's not your average TV show. You're like, oh, this is like B footage from a movie or something. This is this is really uh, this is Zack Snyder's extended cut of uh, Justice League. So this is this is the same type of money they're burning on that. So uh, let's just formal first and foremost say, regardless of the show direction, they are not skimping out. They are they are spending money. Okay, John, give us your thoughts. <laughs> all right. So um, first of all, you uh, actually I, watched I think, it? Yeah, I watched. I watched oh, wow. it. I watched it. Yeah. Right. Right. Everyone's everyone's already complaining now that I didn't bail when I said I was going to bail. Uh, but I guess I, I'm in. It, I'm in it with you guys. Uh, I heard Scott was going to actually watch it, so I'm like, I got. I better watch this if Scott's going to watch it. Um, oh, Scott's so, going to watch uh, it. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's so big I, news. So I think. Yeah, I think. I, I think the one character, the, the Randall Park character, Jimmy Woo, put it like best when he kind of like looks at the screen as kind of like the universe created a show starring two Avengers, <laughs> and 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 then later on he's like this watching it. I'm like, I still kind of feel a little bit like that. Like. Sure, this is great. We're going to full spoilers now, right? Because they, yeah, because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 like Rob was hinting at, and Stu kind of mentioned, they kind of peel away the curtain now. Now we see what's going on in the background. Um, but I feel like it's all it's, it's basically they confirmed what we already kind of figured out ourselves. So it's like kind of like we had to watch an episode of them basically just restating the facts, even with a montage of yeah. Randall Park writing on the whiteboard everything that people have been like kind of pulling from the show already so yeah. it's kind of like we've already kind of put this together could it be have been intertwined in the first three episodes and and made um um maybe uh i guess the payoff the kind of oh that's the helicopter that's the beekeeper that's that's the whatever whatever right so i guess i don't know if those are really like big payoffs and i have to kind of stop myself as well too uh, i don't know if the general public knows that um the power level of scarlet witch like us kind of comic nerds do that's why so so if this is introducing the concept of being able to bend reality um at her will then you know i i guess i gotta be on board for that like i guess people don't know that she can you know go look up house of m which a lot of people are are hinting that this is Mm -hmm. like a a lead up to um where she basically just creates a whole universe on her own so i guess in in explaining this but i don't know if we needed uh, okay i won't go back to the previous episode but I, i did yeah yeah, I think to your point, John, there's they're leaving a lot of carrots, a lot of a lot of things to be undiscovered as discovered as the show goes forward. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to discover more along the way. It's just a matter of whether you have the patience to sit through it or not. And I think that's the challenge to, as you mentioned before, like you don't know whether you have the patience to carry forward to all the the, the jibber jabber that's happening on this show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I admit, I definitely did enjoy this episode way more. Um uh, give, give me, give me the Jimmy Wu. Uh, what's her name? What's Kat Dennings' character? Darcy, Darcy something. Right? Darcy. Give me, give me that show. I'll watch that yeah. show. Um, I, I like, I like their chemistry. I know Kat Dennings. Um, you know, of Two Broke Girls fame. Um, that that show was what it was. I think um, you but, meant but Thor like... one and two fame, John. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't Nick and Nora's I don't, infinite I don't... playlist, John. <laughs> Nick and Nora's infinite playlist. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty With sure. Whenever Absolutely. you mention Kat Dennings or show a picture of her, people are going to be that girl from Two Broke Girls. Um, so you're wrong, both of you. Um, but anyways, uh, I, I like their chemistry. I love Randall Park. You put Randall Park in anything, it makes sure. it better. Yeah. Um, I, I will criticize the one point. Uh, Monica Rambeau, she's she's a she's a captain, right? They call her Captain Ram- yeah. Rambeau. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How does this high ranking character who potentially could be in charge of all of sword go to this site where Randall Park's already like, yeah, we're going to stay here. We're going to send a helicopter in. And then she just sticks her hand in it and gets sucked in like an idiot. Um, I, I did. I was I was like, why? <laughs> why would you do that? It'd be funny if she um tripped or fell in there or something but i don't know i thought it was kind That'd of funny. worse like, oh i'm just gonna, good I'm just gonna stick my hand episode. in here i know it's bad but i'm just gonna do this but yeah sure but, uh yeah yeah give me give me give me the jimmy woo darcy show uh, I'll, I'll watch that um all day oh uh, perfect uh so are you now that you've watched this one and before you were like i'm out i'm out i'm out are you tempted <clears throat> to now watch episode five john um 
I'll watch it. Originally, I was only going to watch the last 10 minutes of this episode. And then Stu was like, no, you got to watch it from the beginning. So I was like, all right, fine. <laughs> but, and, and, you, and you did. But if we go back to the sitcom style and you eliminate this behind the scenes, like if they had both, I, I'd be cool if they have both running at the same time. So you get a little bit of what's going on. You get a little bit of the TV yeah. show. Um, but I if think they go that, back. I think, it, I think to, now they've set it up, in my humble opinion. I think they set up where it was like episode three, where they're going to split potentially a little bit back and forth. Because now that you've got the outside perspective, they may just either. Yeah, have yeah. I, I, I need a little yeah. bit more of the back and forth. I like shout outs to anyone who like is really consuming those first three episodes and loved the mm -hmm. whole style of it. But I needed or at least those uh, throwback stuff needs more of a, a plot thread. Like like it has to be a good episode of like, you know, yeah. Golden Girls or I'm going to go watch Golden Girls instead and, and have way more laughs. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think uh, the next three modern episodes, John with color, will be more in your wheelhouse. Whether it's yeah. uh, you know the Malcolm in the Middle episode or the Modern Family, I think that's going to be more attuned to your your tastes, especially when she's like just talking straight to a camera and giving her opinion. So, uh, Andre, I know you have some interesting thoughts. So uh, why don't you? I'm going to let Rob go last. So Andre, go for it because I know I can already imagine what you're going to say. Go for it. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like this is, is, is another complete waste of time. This episode had a whole seven minutes of new footage and it's only a 22 minute show, right? Like it's, I don't know. Listen, I, I, I'm happy people are enjoying it. I do question though, if we were in an area at a time where there was a lot of stuff to consume, if people would be wasting their time with this, this Probably show is not. an absolute waste of time. Um, like, I don't know about a waste of time. Rob Andre. said C-list characters. Yeah. Who the fuck cares about Kat Denning's character and Jimmy Woo or whatever? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you liked her in, in, in Thor too. You, you like, I can't believe John would watch, watch a whole show with her. Like, well, that, that's great. That's great. But it, it added nothing. Zero. Uh, I love Randall Park concept. has to be in the mix as well. I love <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Randall Park and Kat Dennings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the concept of, of, of sword. You know, if someone can pull up the definition of sword and it was created by her mother. And I know this is coming out way after all the Avengers movies, but if these guys are writing continuity wise, right? Where was sword during all the, the other stuff? Where was sword during the invasion? Where was Thor sword when Thanos came all like all of this stuff? Like I'm, I was super happy that they did the blip thing. And I love it because it goes back to, my big theory that Tony Stark is the biggest villain in the Marvel universe. He could have brought everybody back at the time when they left, but no, let's bring them back five years later and people are dead. So I'm glad they went that way. Say, Oh, your mom's been dead. You've been gone five years. Where'd she find her clothes and where did she find her badge to even go get the job again? If you've been gone for two years, your shit don't exist. Right. So after five years where somebody kept Monica Rambo stuff, like just just chilling in a house for five years and she just went back to life as normal. Right. Yes. That's not the point of the show. This show's got another point. But again, they're leaving all this stuff out. And to me, it's just like, well, well, wow. Andre, absolute, there, there's a, the extended time. cut shows her sitting in a storage locker, quietly breathing. Be like this. Would be, <laughs> and the bottom says, dear Andre, we're going to walk through like five minutes of her waiting in the and yeah, the, but, but Stu, they don't address and five it. They minutes don't, of her like, silently so, sitting in front of a subway station. You know what? Like, like, five don't, don't, don't be so sarcastic. Stuff. That's that's a legitimate point. They literally bring people back five years later and then they just drop right back into their lives. That makes no sense, man. She would be like, again, security risk, time, you know, like uh, that's you know, why they put the protocols or whatever. Anyways, did I like any part of this episode? No. Like, again, like John said, literally, we knew all this stuff. We've seen everything. Explain to me why S.W.O.R.D. would have shittier technology than the last time we saw S.H.I.E.L.D. This looked like S.H.I.E.L.D. from Captain from Thor number one, where they only had these Humvees right do you remember the last flashback we saw to to, to older shield was mm. i think in the ant-man movie and they had all those like goliath had a cool suit and the ghost had a cool suit yet you're gonna send a dude in a glorified beekeeper suit and what what the where the bees come from in a sewer right i like, think i think it was because her, they changed. her he changed 
Yeah. He changed. Yeah. In the yeah. reality, remember as he's walking through his, cause he was in, it was, it, it was, was a bio a, suit. It was a bio suit. And as he walked through, there's that, that yeah. field. Yeah. He walked through and, and it, it cut the cable. Yeah. yeah. And it cut and it changes. But it yeah. was still, it, it, it made Andre, this, this reality clearly changes. Things uh, Andre, let's, let's, <laughs> we get it, Andre. You, we get it. And we broadcast the TV signal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so to your first question, it's sentient world observation and response department. So yeah. Where that, was that's... the response? Where did they respond to any of the threats in the MCU? What? And also when the FBI is there, okay. F Jimmy Wu is FBI and then sword goes, I guess shields disabled. But once they figure out that it's Wanda, they don't call any of the other goddamn Avengers at this point. Not a single one. They don't go, hey, somebody get, uh, you know, Bruce Banner on the horn. Somebody get Hawkeye. Somebody get anybody. This is this at this point, this threat is big. They're on whatever. Honestly, yeah. the, like the show, well, is, I just think I just think it's just it's, Andre. This is I think I think to you, I get it. This is not a comic book where you can just bring in characters. Quickly. Why not? You show. brought in Kat Denning and, and Jimmy Wu or whoever that what's his name? Something Andre, when you, when you become Elon Musk and you have all that money to burn on actors, you can what are do these what actors want, doing? But, and they've already signed up for the could have anyways, they could have but, called but again. I think it's 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 there's legalities, Andre, when it comes to appearances in these Marvel movies. And how much they, they yes. own dude, come on, man. That's 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 a cop out. If Andre, this was Andre, any it's not a cop out. I, I don't think it, you recognize it is a how much out. money it costs you to have these actors in because you just are just living in a fantasy world where you can just grab anyone you want and put in. It's like, well, no, I want to do this way and that's it. In. This what? is an Avengers this level threat. There's a, city, COVID. there's a city now domed off and it may exist or it may not exist. And then you're just going to have random average dudes or or, or the equivalent of a, a sword agent say, okay, let's figure this out. When you know it's Wanda Maximoff, who again, what is, is an Avenger, like they said, Vision's dead. Maybe we might want to call their friends to do something. Oh, I guess maybe again, not. again, Andre, this is a situation no when you watch a movie. This is a situation right? when you watch a movie where the guy stays in a haunted house for a little too long. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. You, you are not you. Again, I don't think you recognize this is a TV show. That's what it's about. It's like you need conflicts. You need people to make bad decisions, and you need to stretch the storyline. If you everything was resolved that quickly, oh, we'll just call Hulk. The show's over in 10 minutes. He'll walk through the field and be like, Wanda, whatever, let's go. So same thing. You could say the same thing about Star Wars. Like there's lots of things where just bring in Luke Skywalker. It resolves, as you said, the Mandalorian. So why <laughs> didn't he show up in the very beginning? What, why watch a show then? Like if you just put the easiest solution in there, that's what you call bad writing. There is no conflict. So you just can't say that, Andre, because there needs to be conflict in these things. Then it doesn't make sense in a movie. Like, uh, like, uh, so I get it. Like, I your 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 critiques are valid. Like, why isn't sword there? But we also have to wait for them to give an explanation. Maybe there was something. We we know that Shield was has been depowered in terms of lots of things. But I agree with you. There there are missteps along the way. But let's just see if they can get themselves out of it. Nothing is perfect, and you need conflict in movies. That's why we watch them in conflict in TV shows. If there was an easy solution, we could go back to Rebels. Your favorite show too, and just poke holes. It's like, why? Well, why isn't Luke Skywalker showing up to save, you know, Kanan? Like, he's still alive. Why is he not there? So, like, why isn't Han Solo showing up? Why is it only Lando Calrissian? Why are they talking to the rebels? So, anyways, nonetheless, uh, Rob, go. Hey, guys. Um, <laughs> so, I'm the complete polar opposite than Andre. I quite enjoyed this uh, episode. I do agree with Andre that it, on one point that at least it, it occurred to me is that they've never given an explanation as to who S.W.O.R.D. is or where mm -hmm. they came from. If we mm -hmm. go back to uh, the first Iron Man movie, uh, Coulson introduces S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and, and they, they build up S.H.I.E.L.D. throughout the course of those movies so that way the average viewer had an understanding of what S.H.I.E.L.D. was. You didn't have to watch the the Agents of Shield show because you had a an understanding. In this, there's a predisposition knowing that oh, oh sword exists, but we don't know what sword is. So hopefully they'll they will explain that in, in you know if it's in this show or something else. Um, but that all aside, I loved the episode. I quite enjoy it. Sorry, Andre, I did. Um, here's the don't thing have that to apologize for liking anything. <laughs> here's the here's the um, except for Stu's mustache. Here's the thing. Um, You're not the uh, only one, Rob. You're not the only one. My wife <laughs> agrees <laughs> with you. <laughs> um, 
I, I, I agree. Listen, I like the fact that the snap happened the way that it happened. Uh, I like the fact that it, it tied up the fact where Maria Rambo, um, you know, has passed. Well, obviously we're spoiling. So she had passed from cancer some years earlier. Um, I kind of get the sense sometimes that the actress who's playing Monica Rambo, um, I'm not entirely sold on her portrayal. I don't know if it's just a, 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 on how she's maybe it's skill. I don't know what it is, but it kind of feels like in those first few Marvel movies, when you had those, you know, two or three minute end trailers or those special on the DVD or the Blu-ray, you would have those the special consultant. shield. Yeah. yeah. And, and it kind of felt a little bit like that uh, at times, especially when she was walking up to the dome. Um, I think her next to Randall Park, you could tell there's a vast difference in terms of skill uh, or craft um, maybe, but that all aside, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the fact that I'm just going to say it right out of the bat. I'm under the impression that Wanda has taken Vision's body because we never, you know, because there's that scene that, you know, all of a sudden reality kind of bleeds away for a, a brief moment. And it's the dead Vision from Infinity War with the gemstone pulled out and he's talking. And I, I'm under the impression that she has removed uh, and is using his body in some capacity, you know, to, to help facilitate this, this world that she is creating. I think it's interesting that this episode laid the foundation to say that Wanda is behind everything. But I do think back to episode one and two, where she seemed really lost as to what was happening. And so I do question, is she creating this or is somebody using her, manipulating her to create this? I think that we have to remember whatever we've seen in these three episodes, but especially in this week's episode four, it's about magic and magic is all about misdirection. Right. Um, so I, I would, I would hedge my bets that she is probably not working alone or that she is not the main villain in this, even though that's what they're kind of spoon feeding you. I think that there's mm -hmm. something else going on. Um, last week I had mentioned that, uh, nothing in these, those first three episodes would require me to have to rewatch them if I was going to go watch Dr. Strange and I still actually hold firm, I think that you could actually watch episode four because it gives you, you have that recap at the beginning, that 35 second recap, and then it fills in the pieces throughout those. So that it actually kind of makes the first three episodes pretty irrelevant in terms of a requirement of rewatching it. That's just, I, you know, mm -hmm. um, I don't think that there's any need to rewatch those yep. episodes again. Um, I would totally rewatch episode four. Um, overall it was just it was fun i mean you can tell vision is start he knows something is not going on something's wrong he's he's well aware of it um i was saying to my son we were watching it and when they zoomed up into they went back to the show it, they went back down to 4.9 scale where everything went you know crying then it, it spread out uh into what we would consider like modern like it was behind the scenes and that's where she was dealing with Monica Rambo because that was cut out of the episode, right? She did that edit, that mystical edit or whatever. And that's when she pushes her through. Vision comes in. He's like, and that's when you see dead Vision. And then once again, it goes back to the four point nine scale uh, to fit to finish the the TV series. It's those attention that that little attention of things that they do that buys into the fabric of this wonky reality, which I really enjoy. Um, overall, I loved the episode. I enjoyed it. I actually think, though, that we might get, because there's five more episodes left, so it wouldn't surprise me if we have another episode five and, and half of six, or even full of six, are back to the uh, sitcom with a bit more, and then episode seven is behind the scenes again. I, I wouldn't surprise me if they went in that uh, in that uh, way of telling the story. So I think just be prepared if that's the case. Um, but man, I'm all in on this. Episode four was great. My son enjoyed it much more than he has in the previous episodes. And I think that's saying something. I know that Scott also even commented that he enjoyed this more. And, so. and, and I think to Andre's point before, like uh, to Andre, I agree with him that, you know, the episode, they're not fully maximizing what it should be. Like if this episode's not in a TV format, why is it 22 minutes? Like it should be much longer before a regular 42 minute drama length so there's opportunity yeah. for them to extend it when they're not constrained to that universe of 40 to 22 minute episodes so why are they not extending it so yes that's a that's a gripe on top of that uh on, and then I, to the point of sword i think to like shield i think 
not everyone's ready for that big data dump of like we're gonna go here and a whole whole expletive like explanation of what sword is i think it's like shield as we learned in, in rob's point about iron man slowly conveying information down and they're slowly going to talk about it more and more throughout the show instead of saying here's sword and blah 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 and here's all the things they've done and like a resume like thing it's it's going to be a slow release of information um because again we to andre's point, we don't know what they've done and maybe again these people have a better plan as to how they're going to give us that information maybe not at once but maybe monica will be able when she's explaining to wanda this is what they've done and this is where they've been rather than saying it maybe two or three times throughout that show and regurgitating um but i think also to andre's point i like the show a lot but if this was jammed with a whole bunch of other shows would it be as as the hype beast as it is right now probably not i think it 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 benefits with nothing happening right now at all. And Disney is yeah. really taking advantage of the fact that a weekly release, they dominate everything that happens in that build up week. Like there's just, it's like a traditional TV show, like lost when it's at its heydays, like you spend five days on message boards talking about what is happening. What's this, what's that? As opposed to if we dropped it all at once, you know, some of us would be happy because we're now used to that style of like Netflix all at once. But again, I, I think that, that they've discovered that the, the chattering on social media drops off within the first like 72 hours. Everyone's like in and out and then spoilers come out and it's over. I think, the, I think there's an interview where they said they were playing chicken with the audience, which I'm like, yeah, what, what kind of experiment is this? Let's play chicken and see how much the audience can put up with and then, and then give them something, you know? So that, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's just the level of not, I don't know... Uh, I, I don't know if you call it arrogance or confidence in, in Kevin Feige and that team to put a product like this out there to say, hey, we know you love Marvel. Let's let's find out how much you love us. So <laughs> how much you love it. <laughs> how much you love us. I think to clearly for Rob and myself, we're, we're in and we're going to watch it, but it's really testing your your affection, Andre and John, to the MCU. Although you both were kind of half out anyways, but... Uh, you know that's that's yeah, yeah, yeah full disclosure i watched those trailers and i was like and, and these two characters in particular especially mm. vision and wanda i'm not like they're probably pretty low on my list of characters that i actually care about in the mcu but but there is props to be given to kevin feige in creating movies that are kind of at least all good quote unquote you yeah. know there's a couple that were questionable but you know overall you know and 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 i think that you know this is a, a nice thing about the weekly format is that it now people can see Kevin Feige and all of them have notes to see how it operates. And they're like, okay, we can never do this again. Or maybe we could try something different or it's going to maybe adjust the way they're going to do the other shows. Or it might strengthen the resolve to say, you know, that, that She-Hulk show, we're doing a half an hour comedy legal show and that's what we're doing. And maybe that that's it. So it's, it's similar to what Andre's thoughts were before. So you're going to do it. Just have all of them one format and don't deviate. Don't give us, uh, don't be in the middle. If you're going to pick one way, pick one way, which, you know, it, it, again, maybe that's what they discovered with this show as well. So, um, and yeah, I, I think she did respond in that show where when the new director asked Monica and she said, well, we're also response. It's part of the sword thing. It's like, we should be responsive in terms of that. I did like the little, little thing. And it made me think a lot about, you know, half our pilots are, are, are either missing or they're afraid and that made me think a lot about like space travel like maybe that's why they're not in space right now and does that open up the space for private entrepreneurs to go in space does that open up for you know for adventurers to go up to space themselves or to do a you know to a mission an unmanned mission in space as the song would say uh or or you know maybe they've already been up there already so I, i'm curious to see whether that's a throwaway line or is that part like, because maybe that explains to Andre's point, where were they before? So either you create the Fantastic Four after the fact, because they should have been there, you know, helping to save New York, or they have to do it like the way they did it in Avengers, where, you know, uh, the Source of Supreme was there. She was doing stuff, but she was just protecting the Sanctum more than anything else. She's like, I got this to worry about. You guys worry about the other stuff. So I'm interested to see where that direction goes with the Fantastic Four. So there we go. Okay, so uh, any other final thoughts uh, before we move off this topic of uh, WandaVision? Clearly, I'll take the crickets going there. Okay, so we're moving we're on. 
we're moving on to our, our, our weekly segment, of course, which is I've spoken with Andre. Andre is going to recommend a comic book or an item uh, that he would recommend for us to either check out. Uh, Andre, go for it. All right. So uh, on the topic of S.W.O.R.D., we've got a brand new series. Um, oops, my background's messing with it. But there's a new S.W.O.R.D. comic out. Uh, and it came out about, I want to say a couple months ago, cause they're on issue number two right now. Um, and it was a very, very cool book. It's in the Jonathan Hickman house of X powers of 10 new X verse with the X-Men and all of mutant kind having their own mutant sanctuary Island called Krakoa. Uh, and this series spins out of the latest, uh, series that ended just in the summertime, which was 10 of swords. Uh, and basically, the sword facility, their giant ship, uh, had been missing for years. The X Men find it and they bring back Abigail Brand to run Sword. Now, previously, Abigail Brand had been part of the Alpha Flight Initiative, which is they're supposed to defend Earth from space uh, threats and stuff, but they hadn't been doing a good job in Abigail Brand's uh, mind. So she then eagerly goes to join and head up S.W.O.R.D. This time S.W.O.R.D. is a very different entity as it's all run by mutants. But what I really liked about this series is that Abigail Brand has a mission. She's literally, she's like, even though this is a Krakoa initiative and that my crew is all mutants, she's like, I'm not thinking of just mutant kind or humankind i'm thinking about protecting the Saul galaxy and i really like that part uh she's a hard-ass character she's really really cool she's put together an interesting team they've got a really cool mandate the art's really good the writing's really good like i said they're on issue number two and they seamlessly blend in the king in black series that's going into venom right now so if you're checking that out you definitely want to pick up at least issue number two highly recommend this book it's bright it's colorful it's definitely different you're going to see some old faces and some new faces and you're going to see people doing things that you would not expect two issues in and i'm already hooked i think it's one of the better x titles out there so check it out sword one and two we've got them both at the store if not you can probably find them at your local friendly neighborhood comic store mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and that was going to bring up my next thing uh segue as to the uninitiated because andre you are uh very knowledgeable in a lot of the comic book world stuff out there so, and I know that you had some, uh, clearly some uh, issues about the way that Sword was represented in the, the show. But for those who don't know the full history outside of what you explained, is there anything else that people from a, from a Cole's note that John would normally read when talking about movies? Uh, what's the little synopsis of, of Sword itself for those who, who don't know? Um, do you want to go a little more deeper? Into um, that? Well, yeah, basically, because it's like I said, gone they, through a couple iterations, but yeah, yeah, they've gone through a couple of iterations. Initially, like I said, it's 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 the um, it was basically I don't want to say the opposite of Shield, but it was a more offensive um, establishment, like just that's the name Sword, and they were set to protect Earth from space threats. So you didn't even know if she, if Sword did its job. We didn't know any, we didn't even hear about what was going on. Uh, so very good behind the scenes things. Uh, they were always tied to the X-Men. I think their first uh, iteration was in Astonishing X-Men by Joss Whedon and, and Sean Cassidy uh, way back in the day. Um, but they did end up uh, the whole, like I said, the whole uh, first uh, team, I think it was thousands of people when, when Abigail was not head of them, uh, they it basically like imploded an experiment went wrong and they lost like the whole crew and like so their flagship disappeared so again if you want to start reading the series you don't need to know anything about that they do a little bit of a recap because if you know anything about the Hickman um, X-Men stuff he's got like pages of data so there's there'd be comic pages and then there's be like uh, in this case, it'd be Abigail's journal. Uh, and she's talking about the different power sets and what happened, uh, you know, in her personal notes. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very cool book. It's very accessible as well. Because if you don't know any of the characters, they literally tell you who they are, 
what their power set is and what they're doing on sword so if you've never read a mutant book you've never read anything like in this universe maybe you don't read comics in general but you like sci-fi this is going to have a very cool sci-fi spin to it and like i said you're going to recognize some characters and there's going to be a lot of new characters for you too but they do a good job of introducing them and getting their uh their personality quirks out there yeah, and to Andre's point, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. is strategic homeland intervention, and then S.W.O.R.D. is a sentient world observation. So they've really drawn the line as S.H.I.E.L.D. deals with external threats, and and uh, S.W.O.R.D. does external, and then S.H.I.E.L.D. does internal. So it's, it's kind of, that's the delineation between the two. Um, and then as for Alpha Flight, I think as Canadians, as the four of us are Canadians, do you want to tell us a little bit about Alpha Flight quickly as to, you know, what um, they so, are. So Alpha Flight used to be the Canadian only superhero team, but I think a couple years back, this is going, wow, uh, more than a couple probably, but then Alpha Flight li literally became a international initiative and they were up in space and Carol Danvers was uh, part of the team. Uh, Puck uh, was part of the team um, and they were supposed to be doing exactly kind of what S.W.O.R.D., uh, is doing but again very political uh, stuff got in the way their hands were handcuffed from time to time but it was cool to see and know, know the name was Alpha Flight they did have their field agents their teams and stuff and they did it their space adventures they are still currently around but uh, as you find out they've been cut with or they've been hit with budget cuts and all kinds of things um, if you want to find out more about that series I think it was the Captain Marvel series by Kelly Sue DeConnick that uh, had really put um, uh, Alpha Flight uh, in because Captain Marvel was the head of it at the time. Uh, and they were hoping or, or um, uh, Abigail Chase, Abigail Brand was hoping that she would take over because she's part Cree. Uh, she's got all that uh, cosmic knowledge and, and she's an Avenger. She's a pilot. She's, she was basically groomed for the job. But uh, the person that... Um, takes the head of alpha flight if you read it and find out you'd be like oh that's not a good choice because we know bad stuff is going to uh, happen with that but yeah cool series cool idea um i hope we get alpha flight going back to its canadian superhero team roots i think that'd be pretty awesome yeah uh, actually andre i think that iteration of alpha flight was also in the uh, immortal hulk series they, they played a, a fairly yes. significant role in the immortal hulk, yeah. hulk stuff by al ewing yeah. right yeah and yeah, and for those eagle eye watchers who are watching the MCU movies, uh, if you did watch Spider-Man Far From Home, there was a scene at the very end, spoilers, where you did see the real Nick Fury and he was waking up on this giant spaceship. So maybe is that what S.W.O.R.D. is at that standpoint? That giant space space that he wakes up to and walking around? That's where Nick Fury has been setting up S.W.O.R.D., setting up that and, and going into space because he realizes that's a bigger threat than anything else. So we'll find out. Maybe if that ties in, then that will solve some of... Uh, the uh, discrepancies or maybe that ship had to fly out and help Carol do another thing. So maybe there is a giant spaceship, but to Andre's point, it did disappear at a standpoint. So if Nick Fury had to commandeer that ship to go somewhere else, that would explain there was that gap as to where they were missing. But this is just an, an educated guess. So we'll find out, but we'll better believe that Nick Fury is involved in both sword and shield. And we'll find out and, and maybe we'll see Coulson again in the MCU because uh, you know, there are rumors of bandied about so all right so we move on to the next topic which is news has popped out rob shared with us uh the the big news of course uh of the list of all the movies and tv shows that will be appearing for us canadians on star is that is it stars no star? just star, star. star. <laughs> star? yeah no, it's different, different star. john confused <laughs> with the z um yeah. the z or the z that's why i was like what is this <laughs> so uh, uh for those who don't know who are Americans know, don't know any. Anyways, the Canadians and everyone else in international markets have Disney Plus, and uh, they are now adding a new service, which is Star. And Star will allow us Canadians and international folks to watch Fox properties because Disney Plus is currently set up to show Disney friendly films and televisions that can be shown for little kitties and kiddos without any type of blood or mature adult content. So that was part of the always the concern is that, well, how does, you know, a movie like Deadpool fit into that world because it is extremely violent. So they have pivoted and added this new service to add on top, which is increasing the price of Disney Plus, but it is providing you all these new content 
uh, all the Fox properties and all the things on it. So uh, uh, Rob has shared with us the list. So I'm going to go around the panel today to ask two things. One, what are you looking most forward to watch either as a TV show or movie? And what is the one TV show or movie that you would recommend the people at home watch or as a must watch? So I'll start with John because John only has one movie or anything that he will always want to recommend. <laughs> uh, and I'll go with that because so John doesn't sad. have many options. Uh, John, <laughs> name no, us. We, we, the... Are we we're starting off with? Uh... I'm going to tell you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now because I don't want you to say I got nothing. Um, I'm going to say. <laughs> Name the movie or TV show that you most want to watch. Not recommendation, what you want to watch. And then we're going to come yeah. back to you in a moment. Yeah, so so going over the list, uh, I've seen a lot of this stuff here. And a lot of the TV shows, it's kind of nice to see some of these shows that were, I guess, canceled or uh, had a short life and now are going to get a second chance uh, on, on this list. So the one that I saw that stuck out to me, uh, it's actually a newer show. It, it's Stumptown, uh, starring Colby Smothers, uh, based off the Greg Rucka stuff. I never really kind of got to watch it. Uh, I know it's different. It's it's a little bit, uh, they went a little bit more to the comedic side, but I, I'm looking forward to uh, watching that. It's like a 45 minute uh, yeah, crime it was drama. It was good, yeah. Pri- private IE type thing. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think I think it's in limbo right now because they're kind of shopping around canceled. for someone. It, so it actually did get renewed. And then mm-hmm. once COVID shut everything down, ABC were like, we just can't, we can't figure out how yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. so hopefully yeah, yeah. So yeah. if people find it on here, because I don't need, I didn't yeah. even know how you were supposed to watch. I don't know what it was airing on before. ABC. I definitely didn't see it. Yeah, I definitely didn't see it really pop up. Yeah. So hopefully maybe it gets a second life from there. And, and, I, and I do like uh, Colby Smothers. So, yeah. and Greg Rucka, too, my, too much. Yeah, so. and they had a cameo by uh, who, um, an actor I really liked it, but I'll get back to it because his mind is escaping me. He was, he was in Gotham. He played uh, with a. Anyways, we're gonna jump over to uh, Andre while I'm thinking about that person's name. Andre, oh, what you got? You guys mentioned this is this doesn't come with your Disney Plus subscription. You have to no no it comes no it, your Disney Plus is going up, so it's it's now increasing. So, so yeah, you have no. So choice. yeah, so it comes out February 23rd, and yeah. if you purchased the year long membership uh it, it's an add-on it's an add-on to the disney it'll just be on that tile how on your disney plus you have marvel and yeah and everything else it'll be called star if you do month to month though right now it's going up from uh is it 8.99 to 11.99 i Something think like so it's two dollars yeah. a month it uh, for me who i did the sub- yearly subscription back in november uh, okay, there's no increase until right until next next november um, so, so next it's just an, so i I did the yearly and I just renewed. So when they go to renew it again, it's going to be more than ninety. No, no, no. It's gonna they're they're gonna they're gonna honor it. So you're not gonna no, see. Yes, no, he's right though. Yeah. So when you renew it next time, Andre, instead of renewing it at the eighty nine ninety nine, it might be like a hundred and ten for the year. Let's say. Oh, what, right I think now? it's one nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I saw. Yeah. yeah okay. So. Well, if that's if that's the case, at the rate that they're they're putting out stuff, there's no way I'm going to be renewing Disney Plus at all because I looked at the list and while there's a ton of stuff on there everything that I've wanted to watch, I've already watched and, and I, and I own. Um, so, but to Stu's question, uh, one of the items that I don't own, or maybe I did own, but my parents have the disc. It was, uh, we mentioned it here, Jewel of the Nile. So mm. I'd, I'd go back and watch that movie. Um, mm-hmm. if, uh, if I could. Yeah. Nice. Uh, the answer is Donald Logue. He is fantastic. Oh. Uh, right. he's one, uh, he's one of my favorite actors, but, uh, Rob, uh, he, he does a really good job playing a private detective on that show, uh, John. So uh, whether he was Sweet. in uh, a couple things, but he was on Terriers, a very underrated show. Oh man, uh, he, Terriers he, is amazing. He was in show. Blade. He was Blade. He was yes, he was also in Blade. 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 But he yeah. was amazing. Yeah, in yeah, Terriers. he was in Blade. But but he was Terriers. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a little bit, a little bit of love. Uh, yes, he was in Blade. He was he was great in Blade. Uh, yes. Rob, go for it. His arm cut off. <laughs> yeah that's right um so yeah listen this is a list uh and just to clarify for people this is like 300 items that yeah. are currently not available anywhere else in canada to be able to stream through any of the other services um and this is our version of hulu essentially um so the one move i went you know, we go through the list and there's so many i'm like oh my god i can't wait to rewatch that again because i enjoyed it i know john was very excited to see encino man is on the list because he's a big Polly shore fan um because <laughs> he likes to right? you know slurping the juice um yes but the one thing i'm actually really looking forward to showing my kids is arachnophobia um i remember watching <laughs> 
I remember watching that and like people like just like squirming at the site. And this is all practical. This is not special effects with like fake computerized spiders. These are all practical effects with, uh, um, you know, with actual spiders. And it gave you the, the heebie jeebies. And so I'm actually really looking forward to torching my kids and making them watch John Goodman try to eradicate and be destroyed by these. He was uh, great in that movie. Spiders. I think oh, he was. I he was hacking a butt while he's doing, he was doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a Steven Spielberg movie, right? Like yeah. it's a it's an Amblin yeah. production. So yeah. for me, I, I'm pretty excited to watch uh, and have them watch Arachnophobia. Just something that I haven't seen in years and years and years. So yeah. All right, John. I don't think I've seen it. I think I read hey, the comic adaptation. I don't think I actually saw it when they oh, when they were good. comic Wait, adaptation everything john when you do yourself a favor and go back on youtube and look at the trailer and my god <laughs> it's it's a wonderful blast in the past like watching old trailers of movies you're just like man what is what a simpler time you know like what what a, what a time um okay john uh now we're back to you oh gosh i can't imagine what this is gonna be uh okay let me just okay john so what is the TV show or movie that you recommend our audience at home watch? This is no longer what you're looking forward to, but what is the thing that you recommend to people that they must drop what they're doing and they must watch it? This is your John Ho seal of approval. The thing that you're like, you know, your life is not complete till you've seen this TV show or movie. Yeah, it's, it, it's actually pretty clear. Like going through the list, there's obviously something that sticks out and, and, and kind of dominates the list and everybody should watch it. Um, so, and we're, we're going to, like <laughs> we're all waiting. <laughs> we all, all of us. Rob, Rob, and me are like, <laughs> we have a funny we, feeling. We have, to, we have a funny. <laughs> funny you have to watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you on a trip back to the '90s. We're gonna go to 1997, <laughs> uh, starring multiple Academy Award winners. Um, in and uh, you're gonna start off with Nicolas Cage, John Cusack, John Malkovich, Steve oh, Buscemi, there we um, go. Um, all right, Ving Rhames. <laughs> yeah, um, like the list goes on and on. Uh, yeah. Dave Chappelle's in it, like everybody, uh, Andre's boy, Danny Trejo, Dan, yeah. Danny Trejo. Yeah. Everybody that you know is a somebody is in this movie, and that is the legendary Con Air. Um, <laughs> Nicolas Cage is an ex con hitching a ride back home on a plane full of convicts, and um, hilarity ensues. Uh, so one of the pinnacles of uh, the Nicolas Cage uh, dominance of the, I think, the late 90s. Um, I actually thought we could go for the trivector, but they don't have face off on here. Uh, they do have the rock and then the con air. Um, and I'm sure they have some other Nicolas Cage stuff on the there. Con Air. It's just called Con Air, John. It's not the Con Air. <laughs> I, I, I want to call it the it's, What about con the Facebook? Air. Let's just remove yeah, yeah. that. I, Let's call I, it I Facebook. Actually, I actually own this movie three times. I own the laser disc <laughs> and yeah. I own it on DVD twice. Uh, I mean, sorry, Blu-ray twice. I own, I, got, it on, I own it on DVD. I got it for Christmas yeah. and I was like, I'm just keeping this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I highly recommend yeah. Nicolas Cage, uh, action vehicle, Con Air. He's got the long hair. He's, yeah. he's actually ripped as hell. Um, yeah, he is. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got it's the worst a, accent in the world. Yeah. It, it's a great accent. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Put the bunny honey, <laughs> back in the box. <laughs> yeah. so I, 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 I there's, a, there's a special shout out in my mind for uh, Colin Meany, who plays the FBI guy, too, and his car, which as a kid, I was like, that's the coolest license plate <laughs> I've ever seen. When I grow up, I want a car with that license plate. I think there's uh, a scene where it's in like the building and, and they walk past it, and Nicolas Cage is like, on any other day, that'd be a weird sight. <laughs> it's like a, it, it's yeah. so good. It's so good. I can't wait to watch that again, even though I already own it three times over. Yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah, there's a special thing with uh, just that whole movie. There's so many fun moments, and Buscemi is just so good in that. And there's so many. Just he has little scenes, but goes for the distance. Wow, John. Uh, I was we were Ma, Rob and I were both thinking you're going to the direction. So bravo to you for <laughs> thank picking. you. Thank you. Shout out to Annapolis. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And James Franco. So Green Goblin versus I don't know what his character's name is in Morbius. Um, but yeah, if you want to see well, the early version, of what's that. his name? Uh, oh, he has no Morbius. See, everyone knows him from Fast and Furious. John, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, Fast yeah. And Roman Pierce. Pierce. He's Roman Pierce in Fast and Furious, but he's going to be in that new uh, Mobius, the Living Vampire, whenever that eventually comes out. <laughs> brutal um andre uh well i can't wait for us to talk about mobius that's gonna be we're all gonna sit there just scratching our heads going uh andre what do you what is the movie that you recommend so, for the service that um it's not a movie watch? there's one tv series and uh everybody should should watch it i think it's probably i i would rank it as probably 
top three for my greatest television shows of all of all time. Honest, Mount um, Rushmore. This, this. Okay, hold on. Can we guess it? Do, do we have like a list here? Can anyone? Oh, John, can you guess it? Rob, can you guess it? I'll, I'll. So this, this show dominated my Friday nights for literally. Oh, I know what it is. I know four it is. years yeah. um, that it, that it was on. It's the best. Um, it's the best it's show in its class. It, it's better than any show that followed up and tried to mimic it. Um, it's it it set the stage for so much of, of the stuff, and it's so many things have like I said have, have tried to to emulate and rip on on it uh, and stuff, but nothing does. Uh, so if you haven't watched it, sit down and you need to watch the first five seasons of the X Files. Uh, this show um, is fantastic, right down from the acting to the writing uh, to the the sets. Like Vancouver was everywhere. Um, the, what's the Chris Carter who created it had a team of stellar sci-fi writers uh, and just writers that 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 wrote real people in these really um, just odd scenarios but every moment of it was believable like it was out there like the truth is out there but everything just felt so realistic um they were able to do the monster of the week episodes while also tying in a narrative uh series uh that 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 growed and expanded it and while it did get wild they were always able to bring it back together except after season five where it just went uh basically i think it was in season five they you know so much recognition they moved to hollywood and the whole tone of the show uh changed uh and stuff and then the two main one of the main characters leaves david Duchovny leaves they try to bring somebody back in then jillian anderson leaves and then they try to bring in somebody else and it doesn't T1000, work was it cry check did, did cry check become the main, main no character? no no it was t1000 no it yeah t1000 uh, oh yeah, so, Robert Robert Patrick, yeah, yeah. yeah so it that other stuff is is is, is horrible and unfortunately the season the show does not end well they brought it back a couple years back and they it was total travesty because they literally made it a comedy from what its roots were like like i say this show at the time when you watched it and you you'd be in like this small town and and you would believe the sheriff the sheriff felt and acted you're like yo that's a real dude they didn't hollywoodize these weren't glamorous looking people they did a great job of just hey David Duchovny is an average looking dude in, in, in a suit that doesn't fit him. Jillian Anderson's trying to do her job. She, you know, great actress, you know, she's an attractive woman, but they didn't, they didn't sexify her or sexy her up or, or, or anything. And they did that across the whole series. Some brilliant, you know, monsters of the week stuff, some very distinct characters, cancer man, Mr. X, this series had it, you know, had it all. I, I think I own it on DVD, but I'll tell you, back in the day, I would record that every Friday night and, uh, you know, bop out the commercials. And then they, I bought them on VHS. The first convention I think I went to was like an X-Files convention at a, at a, at a, at a hotel. Um, so, yeah, this this thing is, it's it, it was a phenomenon. It was a, it was a phenom, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it became a, a way of life for some yeah, people. I, yeah. I, like the truth is out there, yeah. I, yeah. I love the show, Andre. As you know, my background is usually Fox Mulder's office. I changed it up today. But in terms of, I disagree with you on the comedy. I, I feel like the X-Files every season did a comedy episode just like supernatural another show that you and i watch they always did like a fun whether it was with the the you know whether it was with the uh you know the trio uh the but, oh god the um what are they called alone again? gunman alone gunman but, but or, Stuart, or, that wasn't that wasn't the the theme of the show like you nobody said i'm gonna watch a whole year of the x-files to watch this one comedic episode. The comedic episodes in these series are to give the actors a break from doing all of these things and for them to flex their muscles to show that they they yeah. are not only type well, just to change the tone of the show yeah, because it could, go and, it could go magical in one episode. It could go like alien. It, there, was a, there was a supernatural. X-Files was not just aliens. It was something that was supernatural Correct. different. Correct, yes. So but, it was but, that, you have to bounce it out. Yeah. For me, like, for, for me, as and 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 it, 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 there's no surprise here. Like I I enjoy when I want to watch something that's serious. I want to watch something that's serious, and the world fits into the the, the physics and what they set up to. I, that that's just my nature. I I'm not I'm not into like super into comedies. I will watch comedies. I will watch action comedies, but I don't want one thing 
to start as something and then go all all the other way. But that's just me. But listen, if somebody says, oh, X-Files is too serious for me, then hey, look, don't watch it. And then go watch the travesty that's the last couple of seasons, right? Like, or the reboot that they did. Because for <laughs> I me, think the movie's that's, on the list too. That's yeah. not that's not what it started off as. Like, like if you want to get a hardcore fan back, like I like I said, I watched every season. And then all of a sudden to say, oh hey, look, we're gonna change it up and it's and it's literally going to be a comedy. That's 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 not cool that they want to get new people, but then why not just make a new show? Because there was nothing X Files about those last two things except for Mulder and Scully came back. So I, I respectfully disagree, but I like them, but we'll carry on. Nonetheless, no, we're gonna we'll do an X Files one later. We we gave you a lot of time. We gave you at Andre, uh, a Fast and Furious runway. You went full long way on that one. Oh, but, sorry, uh, my bad. So, so but but I, I I will say one thing. Um, to and- I agree with Andre. Like our love for Supernatural, watch the first five seasons, and then there's you cherry pick everything else from the next couple seasons uh, in terms of both X Files and Supernatural. But big shout out to Vince Gillian because that episode with um, Brian Cranston with that guy, the cancer driving across in a car by himself was essentially breaking bad and it is led to many joys in my life, which is that or better call Saul. But uh, nonetheless, a lot of great people came from that show and it's, it's worth your while. And that baseball episode too, I watched recently on, uh, on Amazon and my God, like it's so good, Uh, but I'm a, I'm a baseball nerd. So there was a Jesse L Martin plays the gray face who was playing baseball in, in the Negro leagues. And it's, it's an incredible watch again. Um, so if you have a chance, is this the first time it's been available on streaming services? It's on Netflix right Xbox. now. Oh, no, it's on, it's on oh. Amazon. It was on Netflix for a while. And then now it's moved to Amazon uh, prime. So if you have prime Canada, you can watch all the X-Files episodes. I went back and watched the Shia LaBeouf episode. I went back and watched the uh, Peter uh, Boyle episode where he plays a psychic from everyone loves Raymond. And it's a, it's a great, Anyways, there's so many episodes you can watch. They're fantastic. And, and Krojcik, as you said, an un- underrated Krojcik. Uh, Rob. Hey. Uh, did I, uh, what do you have to recommend? <laughs> what do you have? Um, what do you lot. got? What do you got for us? What do you got? Uh, there's a lot uh, uh, on this this list. I mean, how do you pick one? Um, but because Stu said we had to, uh, I, I did. <laughs> um, you know, here's the funny thing about these shows is that, I, you know, John just said, I mean, he's got three copies of Con Air. Andre has, um, you know, all the copies of the uh, X-Files. Five, five seasons, uh, yes. Right. Um, just like, you know, you, you buy these things. This is a show that, uh, I'm not going to get too deep into history, but I did see the very first episode on VHS. It was a screener when I was working in, in a radio station at the time, um, way back in 2001. Uh, I have them on blue on DVD. I have them on Blu-ray. I actually purchased the digital version on iTunes because I'm, I was just lazy and I didn't want to keep switching discs. I like, I obviously have an issue of why, right? But this show, I mean, now it's streaming. It will be February 23rd, and that is 24. If people have not seen 24, mm-hmm. um, this is a show that I, is a lot of build-up. I used to have, when the new season started, I would have people come to my condo. Uh, my wife and I, we would have people in the theater room, and we would all kind of get around during the season premiere, and we would watch it, um, especially seasons four and five, which were probably the best seasons that they ever made. Um <laughs> that's right that's right um but this is a show that if for those who haven't watched it and there's been a lot of time has passed since 24 was kind of relevant to be very honest with you but this is a show that took place in real time obviously watching it on streaming those first 12 minutes are in real time and then after that because it you know commercials right <laughs> back in the day of commercials the time goes off um but everything was done in real time it was 24 full episodes it was the the the, the life uh, a, a single day in the life of jack bauer who was a ctu agent uh, who was trying to thwart ctu being counterterrorism unit who was twi- trying to thwart um you know whatever you know terrorist incident that was currently happening throughout los angeles um at moments the show is kind of bananas because you're like wait a minute uh, he never goes to the bathroom. He does change his clothes. In season one, they only actually, fun fact, they only didn't know if they're going to get renewed. So they actually almost ended it at the 12th episode. And then right before it aired, they were like, hey, we're going to, you guys are going to be renewed for the rest of the season. And so the season one, this from episode 13 to 24 is kind of rehash of the first 12 episodes. Um, so you're going to be like, wait, what's happening here? Um, 
but it, it's a great show. 24 was a lot of fun. Uh, and I would highly recommend people, if you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. Um, and if you have seen it, go back and watch it again, because man, it, there's no better way to binge watch a show than 24. It just flies. Yeah. Season, season one, season two are, are in my, my books as just fantastic. Just the end of season one. And you're like, what? And that leads directly sure. into season two was right. Yeah. Except she gets trapped by a cougar trap and we're not going to go there. Are we Stu? No, season two had his Pratt Falls. <laughs> this is coming from a guy who just casually just forgets about a giant bear in, in an episode and they just never, never talk about it again. So uh, we'll, we'll carry on, Rob. We'll carry on. So finally, we're at the last part of, of our episode today as we talk about a movie that I recommended to the group. So uh, I, I watch a lot of the DC animated movies. I, I like them a lot. I like how they're... Uh, not tied in an MCU style multiverse where I have to watch all of them. They're, they're drastic one shots, different in every single one. Typically they're all over the place and it's really fun because they get new voice actors, new things and I don't need to watch the previous one to know what's going on. I think the last couple ones where there was the Batman with, uh, with Damien, there was kind of a story arc, but outside of that one, there's been really a lot of whether well, there's New Frontiers or Red Sun or the kind of cherry pick kind of the next the cool trades and then do their best to do an interpretation so i saw this movie and i said guys I, i'm we're, we're reviewing it I, I think it's in the wheelhouse of john who loves kung fu movies rob and i love weird period piece movies and andre likes batman so how can we go wrong with batman soul of the dragon so this is everything we want and more how could how could things be bad uh, compared to what we have right now in the dc universe which is nothing anyways so we got nothing from DC, no TV shows outside of the CW stuff to watch. Um, so we're going to talk briefly on our thoughts on Batman Soul of the Dragon. So, John, what are your general thoughts of this movie? Uh, yeah, so I was, I was, I was uh, first, first things off, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I haven't watched a lot of the animated stuff. Uh, I pretty much checked out since maybe, I don't know, the Red Hood Throne of Atlantis kind of era i did watch some of the the, the damien wayne stuff and all that kind of things that came later uh, didn't really didn't really get into it but i i actually really enjoyed this and i was actually surprised that you do a, a martial arts uh themed animated and then you get martial artists to do the voices like this is cool they got mark dukakis my guy from only the strong um iron chef fame backflips john wick um and then they got kelly hugh from martial law and uh, Scorpion King. I don't know. Uh, yep, yep, bunch yep. of stuff. Uh, uh, wait, John. Uh, let's jump. Next John. Two. Surf ninjas. Surf ninjas. Surf ninjas. <laughs> you said surf ninjas? Uh, yes. Because uh, as list? we learned from that movie, John, money can't buy knives. So that's, yeah. <laughs> Apparently not. The knives of Kwan um, Su. Yes. Continue. Yeah. And then M Michael J. White. You know, Spawn. Like every every uh, martial arts movie that's been released every single year. Yeah, and Sudden Death Two. And then it even has. Um, all, one of my black all -time dynamite john don't don't yeah, disrespect black, black dynamite yes <laughs> black diamond is is a treasure um james hong uh, who's been in like a, a, a bazillion movies um normally uh i think he's a pose father in kung fu panda or whatever but yes but he got to play a really cool kind of sensei master and then kind of uh, has a turn towards the end um are we going spoilers or, or not yeah, really? yeah yeah yeah. you can do whatever you yeah. want yeah yeah, yeah. so and you, you'll notice i didn't really mention a uh, batman but i did think whoever did the voice acting for batman a uh, david gun gun Gintel or whatever uh did a good job but batman's barely in this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 he's so, a grim uh he's in uh, a million little things that's he was also in the real world but that's his that's his thing but yeah, 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 yeah. But overall, he's he's barely in it, and it has a very. Um, if you guys are Batman the animated series fans, it's got a it's got a feel of the that old the old show. And I actually kind of I broke it up into kind of three parts just because my schedule. So I, I kind of watched like thirty minutes, stepped away, watched another thirty. So it was almost like I watched a three parter on the on the animated series. And I feel like the animated series did do stuff like this where they would diverge, and Batman wouldn't be the main focus, and you would see. Uh, other characters uh gray ghost and all that kind of stuff take the take the limelight so and and there's talk of that relaunch so if they're going to relaunch it and they've got this type of uh creative uh team on it like it's an original story as far as i can tell yep um uh, and bruce I was really happy was, with was involved over so yeah yeah overseeing yeah, or something like that he was in yeah, yeah. so if, so if they're going to use this obviously they, they they've made some shortcuts with the animation but you know it is what it is budget carry constraints or whatever i don't know um, about that i think but, it looked pretty good yeah i think it looked, looked good uh, it's, it, it feels like it's missing some frames, but maybe I don't remember the animated series as well as I do. You know what I mean? Um, 
but but like when they turn their faces and stuff some uh, some of it got a little funky so i don't know if that's part of uh, some trick that they can use via the computer instead of actually animating all those frames i don't know how animation works now um because everything's <laughs> digital <laughs> so i don't know but but yeah i, I overall I, I actually really i really liked it it kind of ends in a cliffhanger but i, I was fine with it. I, I, it it'd be nice if another one comes out but i do I'm you, fine with you it just ending like this. As as an aficionado of martial arts movies and action movies, John, give us your thoughts on 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 the way that this this movie was framed in in terms of all the stuff that was happening. It looked like it had the, it had like the '70s flair music that was coming in, so I'm actually glad that they they kind of stuck to that motif and didn't start splicing in uh, Batman, dun, 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 like you know the t- the typical Batman stuff. Um, the Wait, martial arts again, good, John? a lot. How- how does it go Shut again? Up. Shut up, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, overall, the martial arts, a lot, a lot of the characters were doing like your traditional uh, Chinese uh, wushu-ish, kung fu-ish type, uh, type of stuff. Um, like Lady Shiva and stuff. Uh, it was Lady Shiva, right? Yeah, yeah Lady, Lady Shiva. Shiva. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like they, they all had like their own kind of styles, which I thought were, was cool. Um, the, the one scene where they're punching the rock, I kind of cringed. I was like, God damn it, stop punching the rock. <laughs> and there's a lot You're of right. blood. Like, um, I don't know if it was necessary for them to go like uh, I guess these animated movies they the they've changed they 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 kind of ha- add an adult or R rated kind of element like people mm-hmm. dying, uh, blood and and sometimes uh, sexy characters I guess <laughs> but that, that's but, the that's but, the seventies uh, type of motif right like it's it was you know that's the nature of that 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 genre so yeah 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 and and, and of course Richard Dragon is is basically a Bruce Lee ish clone. Um, so despite the fact that we did lose, lose Bruce Lee, um, you know, before he, he really got started rolling, he kind of lives on in all these types of characters. So I, I was I was fine with that, too, as well. OK, uh, Rob, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm going to just essentially reiterate what I sent you in a text yesterday. This movie is fucking whack um, and yet in a good way. So it's it's bananas. All right. Like this is Bruce Tim sitting around being like, you know what I really enjoyed? Like, I enjoyed those movies from the 70s. Like, you know- um, He's old enough like, to be alive in, in that time period. Yeah. yeah, in like Flint. And I like the black exploitation movies and those Kung Fu movies from the 70s. Like, can you imagine like Batman? How would Batman fare in those movies? And Bruce Tim, he put the bong down and he's like, oh, I got this wicked idea, bro. And this is the movie that came out of out of that 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 smoke joint session, it has to be because this. You're right. And to be John's fair, right. Bruce Tim was not the director. Sam Liu is the no, director. Yeah, but yes. no, but what I'm saying, uh, he, he the creative vision probably behind it. This is they they stick to the period piece. This is this is Batman in the 70s. They 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 don't veer away from it. The music is that funky bass line, right? Uh, trip music going on. The the style of the car, the clothes the the, the way hair. they speak the hair everything um i found that the back and forth between present day again present day 70s and then late 60s where they do the training to be a bit like it was more actually really more in the 60s than it was in the present day like sometimes they would only spend like 95 seconds in present day and they would go back to a memory of what during their training so i thought that was a little bit um an interesting storytelling um a way of, of, I guess, filling in the blanks of things. Um, I, I thought it was funny. Michael Jai White plays Bronze Tiger, which we all know he did that in, in Arrow uh, mm-hmm. for a number of episodes. In one, I think Richard says to him, uh, he goes, oh, you, you mean you're, are you uh, Afro Samurai? And he goes, no, man, I'm Bronze Tiger. And I thought that was really funny, right? Because we, there's that Afro Samurai cartoon um, that was yeah. out for a while. Um, I just thought the whole, it, it's, it's unapologetically, fun and it, it is what it is you it you watch it and you, i was on a roller coaster going wait do i like this this is okay this is kind of neat like what is happening why are we doing this and okay this is kind of fun and at the end then the action scenes and i was like at the end i was like fuck it like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna allow myself to not judge it and be critical based on the normal ru- conventional rules of like movies and television shows and i'm just gonna enjoy it for what it is and it was a throwback to a period that we don't we don't we don't really partake in it was fun uh it was pretty cool and i would totally watch this again there's not many of those dc movies that i would re-watch again um i would totally re-watch this again I, I, again I, I quite enjoyed the action and i quite enjoyed the portrayal of all the characters like lady shiva was awesome right um you know um i, I thought that the the boss battle at the end was a little bit bananas but 
you know, hey, again, they're 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 sticking the landing and they're adhering to that 70s style. So I'm I was all for it. So thanks too for recommending it. Uh, and I had to pick Andre last because he's wearing the Batman shirt. So uh, the best for last, Andre. Give us your thoughts. Yeah, I think I thought it was uh, thought it was really good. Um, the throwback, like to the actual Batman the animated uh, style. Um, the designs were good. Like everybody said, the music was good. Um, I will just say I was a little bit thrown off um, because I don't know again who their target audience was. You know, like like you said, there was the the, the little bit of uh the blood the violence there's a little bit of swearing um the the you know um the action you know was 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 you know just a little bit more you know intense and i also think that yeah, some guys was, get decapitated yeah I yeah so, the ninjas get decapitated and and limbs get cut off and they get grown back so i i think that you know they were trying to straddle a line they're like oh we want to have some rated r elements but we also want kids to be able to watch it but I don't think kids are going to get all those seventies vibes. So I almost wish they went a little bit more hard edge than they, than, than they did. You know what? Like I said, it was just, mm. it was like, Oh, we're allowed to have only one decapitation and four limbs getting cut off and we can throw, have blood in three scenes or whatever uh, and, and stuff. So I, I just think it should have gone a little bit, uh, a, a little bit more. Um, I also feel it was th- what DC has been doing is uh oh, we got this idea to do uh, a story with other characters, but we don't think it'll sell, so let's just put Batman in it. Batman didn't need to be in this movie it he because he barely was in this movie, you know? Um, and I, I will say that I was, as a Batman fan, I know that they were, it was the gray uh, and black suit or the gray and blue suit, but it really yeah. looked like the gray and black suit, and I really hated his headpiece. Yes, his headpiece his was atrocious. Really older. Um, so I really disliked his design um, uh, and stuff. And uh, I, I almost wish it was just that 70s Batman, which was the gray and the blue. Like, mm. give him that powder blue if you wanted to. Yeah. Like, that Like it, that would have been amazing. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more gadgets other than just the smoke stuff at the end um, for him. The car, man. Uh, the car. I yeah, thought the, the same thing, car. though, Andre. I, I really want... I was like, if you're going to go Batman in this time period, give me the Super Friends Batman. That's kind of what I wanted to see with that, yeah. <laughs> that power um, blue. Yeah. And uh, and I will just say the ending, though, like, like I, I, don't, uh, I don't... I didn't dig it. You know, like, it, like it, just, it just felt like it should have... They should have said to be continued or part two. Like, I know what they were going for, but I was like... Nah, not in this moment. Like that, that to, to me, it didn't. To, to me, it didn't work, and it, it really detracts from the overall experience of uh, of it. Um, now, again, if it if if this was a movie without Batman and it was just those other characters, I'm like, okay, cool. That's how you end it. They all sacrifice themselves to you know to do what's right because they've all said they've had uh, poor um, uh, made bad choices in their lives. No, they're getting out of there. They're not sacrificing anything. <laughs> that's what yeah i know that but that's but but again it was to me I, like it was just like yeah no that's that that's a cop-out ending you know uh f- you know for me and um so hey andre can i ask you a question because you're a batman like that's your he's your jam how did you feel though about him like breaking necks like because he full-on like killed a couple dudes by like just like going at and, and snapping necks now maybe some of those dudes may have come back to life or whatever, but he still had the intention of breaking necks. Like, what is that? Yeah. So again, that that's, it's really hard because the one guy he did it to clearly came back. And then there was another blue ninja that, that he did it to. And we didn't, and we didn't see, uh, and, and, and I, you know, I said it originally when Shiva, you know, just kills the dude and Batman just sits there and watches it. So then I'm like, okay, now I really have to, throw away everything i know about batman because he doesn't let anybody kill right. um and stuff so it was hard to do that and i and i and i also think again there's too much of this going on in in, in when people make uh series starring characters it's like okay if you want if you want me to take everything i know about batman because you're calling it batman soul of the dragon but you're going to give me a totally different batman then I don't know what I can throw out and what I can't throw out. And I think there's certain things, as I said many times in the podcast, there's certain things that are at the core of a character. And if you can just throw those away, it's not the character anymore. So if Batman is going to kill or he's going to stand beside somebody who's going to kill, 
why not have him bust out an M60 and just mow the hell out down of, of, of all the ninjas, <laughs> you know? So there's, so it's like, you know, it, and even in this particular uh, movie, he did have another alternative. It wasn't like there was, you know, no other chance. Maybe, yes, he decides, oh, this snake monster, I'll do it because it's a monster or, 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 you know, we're not going to get out of here. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I didn't, I didn't like that, but I, but again, I knew that this was not, a Batman we had seen, and it's not a Batman. Uh, it, I guess, like, I guess they're almost just saying at the beginning of these, it should be they should put the DC Elseworlds logo because every yeah. one of these series mm. is a different mm. Elseworld, you yep. know. But, yep. um, yeah, yeah, and, and I agree with you, there needs to be, I guess, the branding of the multiverse or, or whatnot. But I did enjoy, you know, aspects of, of the fact that Batman was there. But it was a Bruce Wayne story. Bruce Wayne, this is part of his enlightenment to learn martial arts. And I like that, you know, he was getting his butt kicked in by like Bronze Tiger. Like he doesn't know anything yet. Usually I'm used to bet, like I was watching this, I'm like, all right, Bruce Wayne's gonna just wipe the floor. Yeah, with him. He's, gonna, he's gonna win this. Fight, yeah, but, right? He's gonna figure gonna out a clever way. And he like, just gets his ass kicked. Yeah, Ben Turner's not gonna win this. Ben Turner can't. And Ben Turner just beats the snot out of him. I'm like, all right, well, we do know in continuity he's fought Batman before and has held his own and he's one of the greatest martial arts experts but i did like that moment where you know they they, all of them have their own skills and they respect each other in their own ways they all know that bruce wayne's an immovable force and to your point john when it comes to the the rock it's like he doesn't care he's just doing what he's doing and he's he's fighting evil as as a sensei said no matter you know whatever it takes whatever it means he's doing it so it, it is nice to see kind of the way they layer on the dichotomy differences of each character um and they kind of bring it back uh, but it, it it was interesting to to you know see how they they left it on on a high note or maybe tick, i would imagine you know to be continued dot 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 was what i would imagine you know in that show they would do it in the 70s font but you know well who knows um okay so how does this in your opinion i'm going to go through everyone rank in terms of dc animated movies where is it is it in the middle is the top is the bottom john where is this the best dc animated movie in your opinion where where where's this fall definitely not and and unfortunately i haven't been keeping up with it um but but i'd say it is like on like it's definitely it's definitely not going to top mask of the phantasm Mm -hmm. but as far as the the animated batman the animated series i feel like it is a a, a good extension of it if the like if, if if like andre said if they had make those tweaks and i don't think the violence and the killing was really necessary in the story Mm -hmm. they didn't need to show it um, like, cause like Batman animated series did very similar things and they didn't show people getting diced up and things like that. So if they had tweaked it, then I definitely feel like it would be on par with, uh, the, especially the later animated series stuff. But I, I definitely say it's, it's, it's up there. It, it kept me entertained. I'll definitely watch it again. And those characters, I would like to see them continue, but if that's it, then that's, that's cool. Uh, Rob. Yeah, I'm kind of with John in, in the sense is that I, I kind of just fell off the 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 wagon on the animated stuff. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Mask of the Phantasm, as John just said. Uh, I enjoy the animated series. I I, th- I always thought Green Lantern: First Flight was amazing. Um, I would say that this movie probably ranks in the higher echelon of the middle part of the of the overall movie. Listen, it's a standalone story. It is what it is. It's not going to be something that seventy fifth percentile kind of. <laughs> right. You're not going to be watching this, you know, uh, every couple of weeks. It's going to be one of these, oh, I kind of feel like something a bit different. You're just going to throw it on. So I would say it's it's definitely up there. And for me, much more enjoyable than some of the other ones that I've seen. Andre? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much middle of the road for the DC animated stuff. Um, I, I think there's definitely, um, aside from like having the voice actors that they, that they got, you know, the martial artists that they chose, um, I think a lot of their other animated movies felt like movies. And this one, like John said, it just felt like an episodic content. Like it's like a like, three-parter. Yeah. The, 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 the animation wasn't, wasn't spectacular. Like John said, it looked like it was missing frames, but it, like I said, it just looked like the television show, whereas stuff like first flight mask of the phantasm under the red hood, um, even the um, justice league, um, the Atlantis one and the Superman Batman one, they all looked like uh, potentially animated movies to me. Um, mm. You know, uh, even, even you go back to stuff like the, the, uh, the Superman and the Batman uh, one where they first meet, like that was 
uh, a direct-to-video movie, much like this one, but it 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 felt bigger. You know, there was just there was just something more to it. Whether it was you know, and it was uh, way shorter too. This was like a full movie length. Yeah, and Batman yeah, Superman. That Batman Superman was like sixty minutes, maybe. Yeah, you know, but it just it just felt, I guess, like just grander. And then think of like one of to me one of the better ones. Like you know, can you even compare this one to? Uh, I don't think you, it's fair to compare it to Mask of the Phantasm theatrical release and stuff, but compare it to uh, Batman Beyond: Return of the Joker. Yeah, you can't. I, I, you can't. No, no. It's better than Sub Zero. Yeah, you know, I, I think better it's than that Sub Zero one. Yeah. So both those so the- movies had you know seven seasons of content that then they jammed into this movie. If we had you know a, you know two seasons of this style of Batman and then it leads into a movie, then it's it's different. Uh, I don't think it's categorized the same way because. You have all that history of, you know, 10 years of the animated series, then five seasons of Batman Beyond, and that led to Return of the Joker. There's just so much to that that you well, understand. I guess, sorry, Stu, I should yeah. should have made it clear. I, 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 I'm not talking from the story standpoint and, 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 and the, uh, the, the history. I'm talking just about the animation mm-hmm. and, and just like... I would say the creativity. I'm not trying to say this one was creative. There's some really cool fight scenes in this. Like I was, I was really impressed by them. But again, I, I, I don't think it was pushing the, the envelope on any part of the animation stuff. Or, or I don't want to say lack of creativity, but that's the only word I got. Like the stuff yeah. didn't. It wasn't just you know. No, yeah, you know I, I, think, I think to the point. I where, hear what I'm uh, saying. Sorry to Rob to interrupt. No, you're not. I feel like the way that the the animation was was made was that it was it's the color even looks like it's from the 70s the theme of yeah. that like it's not as crisp i think on purpose like if you watch it to a traditional like uh, animation like it's it's framed in a way color wise and aesthetic wise to fit that that black exploitation 70s kung fu movie vibe and maybe that's the way that they went through but it and that's what the animation if, if i can do. you know not digress but yeah. like if that's what you're kind of saying like there are it doesn't look like 70s cartoons it doesn't no, like if you want to go back and look at their 70s cartoons mm-hmm. like like you know look at fat albert no, no, but right? I'm talking about the Hold color. Hold on, let me like, finish. Like, yeah. you want to yeah. talk about color palette yeah. and thing, and then look at that yeah. that um that one was it fits the cat? Yeah. Those there's a lot of 70s cartoons that that, that they could have chosen in order to do that, but they they literally chose an animation and a look style that was the Batman the animated series. Mm. You take the afro off of uh uh King uh Bronze Tiger. Bronze Tiger, sorry, and change the music. I don't know if you really know that this is a seventies thing, you know, just cause they're doing martial arts. So you change the score and you change how he looks. I don't, I don't think it was like, I got it and I knew it, but it's yeah. because of the, the, the add-ons, the, 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 the uh, musical cue yeah. and the, and the wildness and, and stuff like that. And, and some of the uh, dress, of yeah. course, yeah. definitely. But I think if they really, to me, you want to make it that seventies vibe, you, you said you, you just, you push it up a notch, you know, you, you, you take the music, you take the, the, the visual cues, the color palette, some of those psychedelic moments and yeah. stuff like that. Well, yeah. You know, but again, not saying it wasn't like, good. I'm just yeah, saying no, no, no. And, and, where, and, where it levels. Yeah, and I think okay. It's very well, we're going to go on. I, but to your point, Andre, the, they made some choices. And I think if they went too far down that route, I don't, then I think we'd all be going, well, who's this for? Why are you copying Bad Albert? Like why well, we yeah. animations grown up in a different style, but the color palette is what I'm saying. Like when I was watching it, it looked like a grainy film from that, time period the 70s it, it wasn't crisp like if i watch an animated show now there's a christmas well, brightness was batman of- hush the most recent one before this the the hush yeah hush yeah. has got a very different look it looks like modern anime mm. it's very like sharp colors and stuff yeah. like that i don't think this would have worked if they went with that animation in that color well i think they I think- went as far as they could rob go ahead yeah. i think though that you, you guys are comparing hush you can go back to the death and return of superman two-part movie that they did or even the dark knight returns two-part movie that they did those are very cinematic in their presentation and in probably their budget i think this was kind of a hey even though those ones are kind of direct to video they were very cinematic um i think this one kind of is does not hold up to the that level i think this is like on the higher end of like a of a television type yeah, um, I think it's a testing made for TV for movie. The, Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm cool with it. I, I'm cool. There, there's, I, I was cool with how it's uh, the budget on it. it. You know, it is what it is. That's at the end of the day, it doesn't try to be anything else. It is not. It, what you see is what you get. So yeah, yeah. They, they don't reveal the budgets for these animated features. No, right? no, no. 
but it, but yeah. even if the probably the budget's similar, it's just a matter it kept to the theme of what it was and and it stayed with it. So, guys, I can't imagine it's going to be that much different because animation's animation. It costs the same amount to budget it to make that look as a parent to make it look fancier as well. So, it is what it is. All right, John, what is your favorite moment in Batman: Soul of the Dragon? Oh, jeez. Is- um, I think it's. I think it's probably when when Lady Shiva is like chasing down. I think they're getting away on a helicopter with the, uh, with the with the, the sword, s- the sword or whatever, and she's just chasing them down. She's like on top of the motorbike and everything like that, and and, and she the just John Wick stop. motorcycle so I, scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I just, I thought her her character overall, other than her nose disappearing every once in a while, I, I really liked kind of her her character as this kind of like just badass. Okay. Uh, Rob, what is your uh, the best moment in the in the Batman uh, movie? Um, probably the scene when they flash back and they're talking. Uh, the sensei is talking about the sword and and something like the other girl. I, I, she, I, yeah, she's like, you know, you know, Shiva shouldn't get it. She's an idiot. Just kind of like putting her down. The sensei's like, okay, you have to fight this all American, you know, white ass guy here to, to to for the sword because everybody thinks he deserves it. And he goes, by the way, you only can use one finger. And the, guy, the whole thing was just, it was bananas, but it was just funny. She puts his finger in, in a guy's cheek and she like twirls him around. Yeah, and I was like, him. It made, yeah, fish hooks him. And I was laughing and I was like, you know, sure. I mean, she's fighting this guy and only using one finger. And I, it was just so, so, so whack. I was all in on it. So that was probably my favorite one. So yeah. Clearly, rip, I think she chops the sword in half. Yeah, Rip Jagger. Rip Jagger. Rip Jagger. Yeah. So, yeah, that was it. Um, Andre? Yeah, I think Shiva was the best character in this. Um, uh, All those scenes that you guys mentioned, of course, uh, but I I like the one where uh, at the end, she's like, you know, I am the weapon. And she breaks yeah. the sword and then just double kills the chick with her with her hand. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. damn it, give me more of that, right? So yeah. I yeah. thought that was uh, that was uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, John, what is the worst slash cringiest moment in this movie? Um, I think I mentioned it before when they're when they're punching the rocks and they, I don't know. I, in my head, I was like, how are they coming up with this sound effect? Are they taking a steak? And like hitting it against like uh like probably hitting it with yeah. like the, one of those metal hammers or something like that. It, it wasn't like that the scene was bad. It was just like I was just kind of like okay, I get the fact that he's demolishing his hand on this rock. <laughs> I was like, I think of I think I've seen I've heard enough of this <laughs> sound. Yeah. Uh, Rob. Um, I'm just gonna say anytime Batman proper was on <laughs> the screen, you know when you buy a Superman or Batman costume from Party City and it's just the one piece and the the underwear like the blue underwear yeah. is all one and it looks kind of wonky that's where I felt Bruce Wayne in this movie got his costume from <laughs> from Party City it looks stupid and so anytime Batman proper was on the screen I was like it's horrible <laughs> all right thank you Andre <laughs> um I think for me was the the first scene where we see the bad guy and and uh, you know he pays the prostitute. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Puts yeah, him yeah, in the yeah, scene, yeah, yeah. and then was the that necessary? Come out. I'm just like, man, get at like like it, you know. It was even actually the scene before where the guy comes in and he's in bed with the girl. I'm like, yeah. why do we need to see <laughs> phrasing? This? You, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, like, to be fair, <laughs> that is very 70s black exploitation. Like that's the theme of it. But yeah, you're right. It doesn't. But, necessarily but we didn't need, need it, to yeah. see it from that angle. Yeah. Like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, but anyways, I thought the scene where she was in there and then the snake came and then yeah. he watched like dance for me. I'm like, oh my god. Like again, this, <laughs> yeah. kids don't need to see that. We could have could have done with something else, or you go all the way, like in you know and and stuff. But yeah, I thought <laughs> that was just. Yeah. I was thinking there was like a rancor pit and she'd fall and then be covered in snakes. But a couple snakes come out and I was like, oh, this is weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, all right. Well, nonetheless, John, would you recommend that people watch this movie? Yeah, I'd say check it out. Yeah, for sure. John, uh, Rob? Yeah, you're in lockdown. Sure. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, <laughs> what the hell else are you going to do for an, an hour and 20 minutes? By all means, in, enjoy it. You just recommended 10 seasons of 24. So there's lots of opportunity for people to watch stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Where, you know, you often you just like watch plus, 24. It's 24 episodes the, each season or like eight seasons. Yeah. It actually takes 18 hours to complete one full season. And you know the only reason I know that is I watched season four, binged it over two days. Yeah. Um, so yeah. All right. Uh, Andre? Yeah, I would say, t- I'd say check it out. Okay. 
Well, here we go. Now we're going to wrap things up. John, Andre, where can we find you on the interwebs, the internets, and in the desert of the real? What's going on? Yeah, so if, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please give us a subscribe so you can get those notifications when the new episodes drop. Um, Heroes World Online on Instagram and Facebook are our most active. You'll get uh, updates of all the new releases and our, and our updated hours uh, for curbside and hopefully uh, when our inevitable reopening happens. Um, and then shoot us messages via any of those methods as well. Um, and then uh, the website Heroes World Online um, and the audio format Heroes World Podcast. Links will be in the description. Andre? Yeah, right now, um, hit us up on the, those socials uh, and uh, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel if that's where you're watching it uh, and uh, continue to share our stuff. And thanks for all the support. Um, again, uh, as Andre mentioned before, please, uh, if you can support your local comic book store or small retailer, please do such. Um, they are, would be very grateful. Any support you can and give to them, whether through online purchases, curbside and all those different things. Uh, does matter and does help. So whatever it can do, whether it's a small restaurant or retail or your friendly neighborhood comic book or game store, just do what you can, buy a couple things. Um, I know everyone would appreciate that considering right now uh, lockdowns happening and, and uh, you know, stores need your help more than ever before. Uh, as John mentioned, please uh, indicate your disdain or love for the Batman movie or recommendations on on uh, WandaVision or recommendations on shows that you are looking forward to watch on on our various social channels and and we'll also take your recommendations on maybe what we need to watch on uh, on stars star stars star. <laughs> stars is a different sh- stars. different network <laughs> um rob where can we find you um, yeah, so on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Rob Gadet, and obviously uh, every Monday, John and I are live uh, at eight o'clock on the YouTube channel um, with the Heroes World Psychic Show. We are still we are nearing the end of our greatest '80s action movie bracket, um, so please join us tomorrow. It's been a lot of fun. We get a uh, you know people commenting, and they're even commenting to each other during the during the show. Uh, so it actually is a lot of fun. Um, and I think that eventually when we, when we do our nineties, the inevitable nineties bracket, John, the good thing is a lot of those movies will be on star. So, (laughs) you know, we don't have to, people have to to figure out how they're going to watch along with us when we, when we rank these movies. So you can find us there Mondays at eight o'clock live on YouTube, uh, uh, and, and please join us and and be part of it. And, and it's going to be a a big battle tomorrow night, um, as we whittle down the final four. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you have a chance to check out our recommendations. Until next week, see you all later. Goodbye. Nanu, nanu.